All right, Williams, you ready? Proverbs chapter 11 and at the very first verse. Follow me. A false balance. A false balance. Is abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. That's beautiful. Yes, it is. <coughs> you know, in the 1930s and 40s, it was a big scam of store owners. When it comes to weighing they produce, yeah. especially meat, they were putting lead weights, iron weights with all kinds of shapes inside chickens and inside other form of produce. So when you put it on a scale, the scale will give you a false number, a false balance, right. which will make the customer pay more money. And uh, you have what is called the Weight Measure Bureau. They were coming to your places of business, sometimes unannounced. Yeah. And you may have thought it was a regular customer, but they was able to see. You got a little old scrawny chicken. Shouldn't be weighing 25 pounds. Okay. That's right. <laughs> huh? That's right. I mean, a scrawny chicken, the kind that you, when you fry, you got more crust than chicken. Amen. One scripture says that they shall be found in a balance, yes. weighed in a balance yes. and found wanting. The scriptures, brothers and sisters, is our scale. Right. That's right. For in the book of scriptures, our whole life is there. That's true. That's right. We gain weight yeah. by conduct. That's right. Get me. I am not talking about fat. I am talking about sin. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and at verse 3. That's what? Talk no more so exceeding proudly. But what? Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Yeah. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. The God is, God is a God of knowledge. And by him. By him. Actions are weighed. Actions. Are weighed. Are weighed. Then the apostle said, We are compassed about. That's right. Great cloud of witness. Yeah. That's right. Let us lay aside every, every weight. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. So if your actions are weighed, if you want to decrease the heaviness of the scale. That's right. You have to decrease your actions. That's right. If you want the scale, get lighter. Because all of us are on scripture. Yeah. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 2. Follow me, get me. I want to soak you a little. Proverbs 16 and at verse 2. All right. All the ways of a man are clean in all his own eyes. All the ways of a man is clean in his own sight. But the Lord, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the Bible got it out of my so beautiful. That's right. The Lord weighs the spirit. the spirits. And when he weighs the spirit, That's he's right. weighing the actions of the body as a result of that spirit. That's right. Now you got to have an honest weight. That's right. You know, when that store owner put little things in chickens and whatnot. There's a false balance coming up. That number is not true. That's right. That's right. So when the weight measure bureau come in there, they, they investigate chicken. Hmm. They investigate other things and find little weights. That's right. And then that owner have to pay a fine. Amen. Sometimes they rig the scales. Mm -hmm. Make the scales say a lie. That's right. Something only wear four pounds, and then they got that scale rigged. The whole objective is to get more money out of you. And then uh, the truth, four pounds, but the scale say ten. That's right. That's so right. here many of us lie to ourselves. Yes. 
And we take that heavy weight of sin. Yes. That we're in. That's right. Besides saying yes. I am wicked. <laughs> That's right. Yes. I am a liar. Amen. 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 They put up a false balance. False. I, I told a little white lie. That's right. False balance. False balance. False balance. You know, in baseball, <laughs> there's a thing they call half swing. Yeah. That's right. And when we used to play half ball, there was a one fella. You remember Mike? Short Mike? Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a white brother. We used to call him White Mike. White Mike. <laughs> That's right. The reason why we call him White Mike, because there was another Mike that was real dark. That's right. And we wanted each one to know which Mike we was talking about. <laughs> Amen. And Mike was a baseball lover. Oh, yeah. And we all would play half ball. So you that don't know what half ball is, it's the hood version of baseball. <laughs> That's right. Half ball, we take a tennis ball, we cut it in half. Right. Amen. And we don't use a baseball back, we use a stick of a mop right. or a stick of a broom. That's, That's right. right. And we ain't running around bases. Our home run is when we hit that half ball at the highest roof right. of that house. That's right. And brother, we are yelling and screaming, I'm mad. And when that half ball go and that fella swing, he, he's in it. Now, Ooh. Mike, <laughs> Mike was known for the half swing. Yeah, that's right. And you only get three strikes. Yeah. That's right. And uh, Groove had a way of making that half ball like a frisbee. He'll pitch it until it spin. That's right. And everybody couldn't pitch it that way. And Mike and Groove, there was at odds. Oh, yeah. Mike was a good swinger, and Groove was a good pitcher. Amen. And when Groove come up, Mike come up with that long broom handle, he'll tell him, come on, Groove, come on. <laughs> That's right. Groove would pitch that thing and put a spin on it. Mike would strike out. Groove said, I told you, you're not ready for me yet. <laughs> Then Groove would pitch it again, and this time Mike would wait. And when Mike Gray to swing, and feel as though, I, I, I bet I hit it. Mike <laughs> always would just, <clears throat> That's right. And then Mike and Groove would argue between strikeout and half swing. Mike would say, come on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's just a half swing. That's right. In God. You either going all the way, oh, yeah. or you don't get credit for no way. That's right. You can't make and make it a half journey. No, no. Oh, no. Full course. Full course. Glory to God in your journey around Scripture. That's right. Anytime you work out, you want to lose weight physically. For those that do. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Amen, I say. And uh, so they work out so they can lay aside their weight. Let us lay aside every weight. So now when it comes to sin, uh -huh. sin brings about spiritual sluggishness. That's right. Yeah. Are you listening to the old man? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sin bring about spiritual sluggishness. That's right. And that sluggishness is brought about the weight, weight. that we have accumulated yeah. uh -huh. over a process of time. That's right. That's true. That's interfering with our spiritual enhancement, yeah. development, divine stamina. Yeah. That's why some of you can't focus. That's right. Because your actions are weighed. Actions are weighed. That's why you can't complete a fast or start one. That's right. Actions are weighed. Actions are weighed. That's why some is trying to decide whether to stay with God or stay with your friend or go in the world. That's right. 
God said he weigh your spirit. Weigh the spirit. Eh? That's right. He weigh your spirit, but, I said. But the Lord weigheth the spirit. Do you hear this? In Proverbs chapter 16. The Lord. And at verse 4. Says what? The Lord hath made all things for himself. He made everything. He did what? The Lord hath made all things for himself. He said, I made you for my glory. That's right. All things. We are made for him. That's right. Being made for him, he got the right to tell us what to do. How to do it. When to do it. That's right. Where to do it. And with whom. That's right. God is he's very demanding. In fact, he's a dictator. Oh, yes. I want to say I hate dictators. Well, you, <laughs> what you think God is? That's right. In serving God, we have absolutely no say so. No. He don't want our advice. No. He don't need our opinion. No. That's right. He sent prophets and sent apostles out. Get what I'm telling you. The prophets ran ahead of his flesh. That's right. He came to fulfill the will of the Spirit in the flesh. In the, flesh. Oh, yeah. the apostles came and preached after yeah. the flesh was transformed into a glorified body. Then they went into all, all, the, world all the world after he ascended above all heavens. That's right. Rules, regulations yeah. was laid for us to be transformed. Yeah. See, a lot of us want to serve God, but we don't want to be transformed. That's right. <clears throat> You've got to be transformed. Yeah. That's right. You know, I often say I love classic cars. I love classic antique cars, depending upon the model, make, year. And uh, if I want an antique car, if I want a 1931 Bentley, uh -huh. and it's all rusted out, all ate up, mm -hmm. but yet the man only selling it for five thousand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody look at it and say, "You gonna pay five thousand for that thing?" Oh, yeah. yes. Mm hmm. Well, I take it and then take it to a man that can resurrect it from the dead. That's right. That's right. And he's going to take his time and save it yeah. and deliver it from its ungodly appearance. That's right. But it needs someone to restore it. And be not conformed to this world. By what? But be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Yes. Amen. The first thing that needs to be renewed. Amen. Is your mind. That's right. Change of thought bring about change of behavior. Yes. Amen. Same thoughts, same mindset. Make you the same person you are 15 years ago. That's right. Even if you keep coming to church. That's true. Mind don't change. You're the same. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mind don't change. You are the same. That's right. That's true. If your mind don't change. You're the same thing in church as you was in the club. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to the world. But be transformed. 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 By the renewing of your mind. Your mind need to be reconstructed. That's right. But before your mind can be reconstructed, it first must be demolished. Amen. Lord, teach us how to pray. That's right. That's right. We pray and ask God, change my way of thinking. Yeah. But do you ever ask God, destroy the mind you have? Mm. Have you given that any thought? That's right. Let's go to school this afternoon. Oh, yes. And construction. First, the land must be cleared off. Yeah. That's right. Then digging take place. Forms is set for concrete so the foundation can be laid. That's right. So that land must go through transformation. Soil is tested yeah. to make sure that this land is even good for building. That's right. 
Are you good for building? Mm. Glory to God. That's Wonderful. Right. Is your soil, is your land, is your temple, is your body good for building? Is it good enough for God to make it a temple for him? That's right. The word of God say our body is the temple of the living God. Oh God. The apostle says about this earthly house of this tabernacle shall dissolve. We have another not made with hands eternal in the heavens. That's right. If you want God to dwell in you, then you have to sanctify yourself sufficiently. sufficiently. We are praying and fasting. But God give us a strong, sound mind. Lord, help me to live holy. That's right. Help me to be sanctified. Oh, yes. But have you ever asked God at any time, destroy me first? Mm. Nice, nice. Amen. Demolish me. Yeah. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. Before anything new, is constructed correctly. Yeah. That's right. It is written, all things are passed away, away, and behold, all things come new. become new. Look at the old Adamic behavior yeah. that you're still dealing with in areas of self. That's right. You praying to ask God, help me deal with it. Help me overcome it. That's good. That's good. But why deal with something if you don't have to? Nice. Nice. So ask God, destroy it. Destroy it. That's right. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and at verse 10. I literally was about to tell you to get wow. that. Mm. Look at the calling that God put on Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're at verse 10. Tell you what? See, I have this day. See, I have this day. Set thee over the nation. To set thee over the nation. And over the kingdom. For a reason. To root out. Amen. That's what preaching does. That's right. Hallelujah. Preaching is a root out process. Root out. To eliminate the constant coming black, coming back of an unwanted plant. Yeah. That's right. You can't keep snipping. Oh, no. That's you got to right. get the root. Right. Right. Because it is the earth that's nurturing it and making it keep coming back. That's right. right. So you have to go to the root of it, Amen. the source of it. Yeah. And pull it up. That's right. To do what? And to root out. What else? And to pull down. Ah. Amen. Pull down the strongholds. Pull down. Pastor Paul said, pulling down the strongholds, casting down the imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. Then he said, bring it into captivity, into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's right. Our every thoughts thought. need to be in captivity. Yeah. That's true. Finish Jeremiah, then we'll get that. Back at Jeremiah 1 and verse 10. Get this. See, I have this day set thee over the nation. Set thee over the nation. And over the kingdom. To do what? To root out. You got to root, ask God to root out the thing. Root it out. What you mean root it out? Get the source of it, Lord. Yeah. That's right. Get the source of it. That's right. And then pull it out. And to pull down. Pull it down. Yes. Amen. Then what? And to destroy. To do what? Destroy. Have you ever asked God to destroy you? All right. All right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? Ask God to destroy your will, your desire. For all of that that he hates. That's right. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Many of us never prayed a prayer of destruction. Self-destruction. No. We do patch up prayer. That's right. Putting patches over stuff. That's right. Never... Ask God for destruction. Amen. For me to be a new creature, I can't put patch over the old creature. That's right. 
I must be totally, ultimately destroyed Destroyed. and demolished. So a new transformation can take place. That's right. That's why the purpose of the gospel is forever killing. Killing. It's a forever killing. Yeah. Someone say, what? The Bible says you're killed how often? All the day long. A forever killing message. That's right. Someone say, well, when I come to church, I know I'm going to get hit. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Minister preach on Tuesday night, hit you. Wednesday night, hit you. Thursday night, hit you. Friday night, hit you. You've been hit so much, you debate about coming Thursday. <laughs> so you sit home Thursday and watch it on YouTube and get hit off from the screen. <laughs> What? All the day long. All the day long. Thank God still don't let you get by. You read something that hits you. That's right. Why is the Lord constantly attacking his people? Yeah. He's attacking his people because he got a conflict with Satan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if we are his children and he is our father, he don't want you to love his enemy. No. He wants you to have the same argument and the same conflict that he has with the devil. That's right. He knows that if he lose you to Satan, then Satan gain a soul. Yeah. And then you go to hell. Oh, yeah. God don't want to send you to hell. No. He said he would that no man perish. That's right. But that all come to repentance. That's right. So it's a tug of war. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Tug of war. Come here, Logan. <laughs> Glory to God. My brother here behind, Brother Evans. Come here, brother, with the hound tooth suit. My brother behind him. Come here. Stand in the middle, Logan. You get on one side and get his arm. You get Logan's arm. Hold the whole arm on the end. Brother, you come on the other side. Hold that arm. Yeah. You pull this way, you pull that way. Yeah. That's a tug of war. Tug of war. Now, if he want to serve God, yeah. it's going to be some tension. Oh, yeah. The difference between God and Satan, and don't, don't mind me calling you the devil this time. <laughs> Satan don't always use force. That's right. And God, he don't use force. Yeah. God speak and wants you to lean to him. That's true. That's true. Satan, he comes. Let him go. This is how Satan to get you. He may not tug on you that way with force. Here come. That's right. That's right. What is objective? Establish a relationship with you. So you can forget he's a serpent. Oh yeah. So you can forget that God cast him out. He camouflaged himself as your brother, as your sister, as your friend. But the whole objective is to keep your old house built. The objective of God is to take the old house and demolish it. Demolish it. So whatever God tears down, <laughs> Satan comes. To build back up. That's right. So it's a tug of war. That's right. In the mind of the child of God is God's information. Yeah. On the body of the child of God or in the body is the will of Satan. That's right. I find then a law. Where? That when I would do good. What's present? Evil is present with me. Are you listening? That's right. You got to go back to prayer. We got to go back and pray. We do got to go back to pray. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. How many of you have asked God to destroy you? Destroy you. Wow. Lord, help me with this. Yeah. Lord, destroy this. Destroy it. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Lord, 
I can't focus because of him. Yeah. Lord, destroy my feelings for him. That's it. Come on. Lord, I'm struggling going to the club. Lord, destroy my love for the club. Amen. Stop doing patch up prayer. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Ask God to destroy it destroy. and stop living a life of putting up with. Yeah. Lord, teach us how to pray. To pray. This is what makes many of us deal with the same thing for so long. Because you prayed wrong. Yeah. That's true. Give me, let me see if I'm correct. Proverbs 28, 12. Amen. I believe that's what I want. Proverbs chapter 28 and at verse 12. Get this. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. Yes. But when the, but when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Yes. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Yes. But, uh, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Patching over your sins. Yeah, covereth his sins. Patching over it. Covering it. Covering it. Not even honest with your own self. That's right. And you wonder why you haven't gotten away in God year in, year out, year in, and year out. He, why? He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Amen. That's it. Covereth. That's it. Amen. I want to soak you a little. Yeah. Seeing we all can pass about with a greater cloud of witness, let us lay aside every, every weight. Of weight. Sin. Lay it aside. Yeah. Lay it aside. Pastor Jennings, I'm trying to lay it aside, but why is it so hard to lay it aside? Amen. Because you love it. Right. Just tell the truth. Let's tell the truth of it. That's right. Bible says, where your treasure is, there with your heart be also. Oh, Just tell the truth and call a spade a spade. You love it. That's right. And as a result of loving it, you know, you're scared to ask God to destroy it yeah. because you're attached to it so much. Yeah. That's right. 